Well, it won't be too much longer.
That's, that's Jerry's maximum when he goes up. It's what? 30 pounds. Yeah. But he didn't carry all the camera gear. Yeah, he's not carrying camera. And the types of cameras we gotta carry. No. Yeah, well, that's a fact. Yeah, the big boy? Yeah. Okay. That's a fact.
So there was uh, hoof marks beds down there as well. Yeah, we saw three beds down there. That we saw also some uh, sign from uh, brown bear yesterday. Uh, Smitty and I were hunting in another site and uh, we we're using the deer call. I'll use the deer call tomorrow. I'm not going to use it tonight because uh, we don't want an unwanted uh, guest uh, like we had yesterday, which was a uh, it's kind of like the baby, but it's the pet pet bear that uh, hangs out in this area. So it's kind of cute. It's about 400 pounds and uh, um, it came into the deer call. So it's the first brown bear I've ever called in. So it was kind of a Kind of a, an exciting moment. First bear I've ever seen. Yeah. So. so we're kind of beat right now. My feet are kind of, my toes. That's what happens when you get over 50. And uh, circulation isn't moving around so so easily as it did in our 20s. But tomorrow, well actually this evening, we're going to glass and see what we can see up here. And we'll have you with us. And uh, maybe we'll get a shot this evening. And if we are, then we've got a bunch of uh, mothballs right here. And we'll set these mothballs around uh, where we drag the deer to. And the guts, of course, we're going to leave in the area that we shoot the deer. And they'll drag the deer to another place and either cord it up right then and there or just take the whole thing and put it up in a tree. Or just, you know, cover it up with the, uh, down on the ground and just keep the, the scent down and off the, off the game trail. But right now we're going to have a little... A little freeze-dried, rehydrated uh, mountain food, camping food, and then we'll see what's up. So what are we doing? Okay, let's see what we got going. This is the Alaska way and the Russian way. Banya. Oh, look at that. Ah, it's going, going water. It's getting steamy already.
So which beach bring it down? The one over there at Hurley's. At Hurley's? Yeah. But yeah. not around here? No, you can bring it down here. Right here? Where we were going to go land? Yeah, we're bringing it down here where we are going to land. That's where you bring it. You get one on this bench. You yeah. One over there, you can bring it down to Hurley's over there. You okay. See the there. Yeah. Or bring it down to the gold mine, which there was Okay. What we've got here is we've got a, a bear dig and what the bears are doing because you know we're getting in a winter and they got to hibernate and they're trying to build up as much fat as they can before they go in for full hibernation. And so here's an old stump and it's been looking for some grubs. It's just trying to find whatever food it can because this year we had a really bad uh, salmon run in Kodiak and also it was a really bad berry crop, you know, salmon berries and stuff like that. So they're just trying to do everything they can to just fill up on fat to get ready for that hibernation before they go in. That's one of the reasons we're kind of like on pins and needles right now because we don't want to run into a hungry bear. And that's a real fact out here on Kodiak. Been here a week. Jumped a few does. Got on some some bucks we couldn't see clearly. We couldn't get a proper shot on. And just reminded there are rules not to break. My rules are do not hunt on a full moon. Try to, rule number two, try to replicate the same type of conditions that you had when you were doing really well, i.e. two years ago when I had three deer down in two days, which is it was colder, there was more snow, the deer were further down, they weren't competing with the bears, the bears had already been hibernated, so there wasn't a worry about being predated on by the bears, so they are a little bit more relaxed.
Well, it's been a few sleepless nights here on the homestead, and uh, I'll get to that in a moment. But I wanted to thank you for coming and uh, watching this show. Uh, and this episode, uh, you can tell we got skunked. And um, the year before, though, was phenomenal. As I said, two days, I had three bucks down. And uh, that was a lot of meat for two years. But that year, that uh, 2018, was not a good year. Uh, salmonberry uh, uh, crop was bad, and the salmon uh, runs were bad in this area specifically, in uh, Kodiak. And as a result, the bears were still hungry. They weren't denning as they were the year before. Uh, it was also warmer. The snow line hadn't uh, come down as far as I had hoped it would. Um, and also, uh, just the whole situation. That's why I left that little spot in there where Joe McKenzie says, hey, I got a suggestion about uh, your load. And yeah, we had a bunch of cameras. Looking back on it right now, uh, I could have uh, cut back on uh, some equipment that uh, was never used and brought up on that uh, backpack trip uh, up. We were trying to get into, um, into the goats, actually up at that uh, high altitude, there's a bowl up in there. And it's kind of good that we didn't get in there because as you saw the snow coming down, we could have gotten stuck up there. And the uh, events could have actually been close to what had happened the previous year, which was that I closed up my buddy uh, Joe McKenzie's cabin because he snapped his um, hip bone and had to be medevaced out uh, by the Coast Guard. And then I flew out three days later after bear proofing the cabin and all kind of stuff. So there are some adventures in Kodiak. And if you go, I think it'll be those kind of memories that uh, will last a lifetime. And if you're as lucky as I was the previous hunting season, you'll come out with some phenomenal uh, venison. It, to this day right now, having been up here for nine years in Alaska again, and hunted caribou, uh, deer, moose. Caribou, when I got back, was like the top, top, top for venison taste. Now it's actually Sitka blacktail taken from Kodiak uh, early in the winter when there's still snow. I mean, when the snows come down, the snow lines come down, and they're feeding on the seaweed. And when they feed on that seaweed, there's something magical in terms of the taste. I actually picked up some as I was waiting for my, fl my flight out that first year. And it I was wanting to take some of that uh, seaweed back with me because it, it tasted so good. So that's a time I'd recommend is when you can be sure that the snow line will push the deer down and they'll actually more actively feed on that, uh, on that seaweed. So this is kind of like the style of uh, show that you'll be getting, beautiful music, relaxing. whole idea is to give you an opportunity to get outside if you can't get outside. And to show a part of Alaska, what's it like to homestead up here, hunt and fish as a subsistence hunter and fisherman. We'll get some flying in. You saw some flying in where I'm not actually piloting, but we'll get some other stuff uh, coming in. I'm looking at a, at a few planes right now, uh, a mall, Super Cub. Uh, PA-12, uh, the types of planes uh, for the type of work I'll be doing uh, this summer. But thank you for having watched again. Uh, please do subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Uh, in terms of sleepless nights, my buddy Ziggy, uh, you don't really get that. And you won't be getting that in the, uh, in the episodes of, of uh, video that I've shot because he had, will have not gotten into that point of dementia that he had reached over the last two years and it had gotten really bad. And within the uh, last week he uh, disappeared, actually got off the, uh, the deck and made his way down to the road. And I tracked him. I had actually put my snowshoes on to track him, which is amazing because his hips were going out. And it's been a question actually over the last couple months of whether I'd actually have to put him down. And it seems like 
he may have actually gone and done it himself. There's an area straight across where there's a lot of, there's a bunch of game trails, and that's actually an area that I hunt, um, that I saw his track go in there, and then also I saw an old wolf track. And if you've ever seen a wolf track in contrast to a dog track, there's a reason that wolves do pretty well, especially up here in Alaska. Uh, our wolves are not like the wolves down in the lower 48. They are big. And people saying that people don't get attacked by Wolves up here, that's an old wives' tale. So that tells you how they can be aggressive when they're hungry. And a dog is nothing. A dog is a snack, especially in American Brittany, is a, a light snack. So um, we'll see what happens. It's kind of, it's, today is uh, Friday, and uh, he went down the driveway on Tuesday afternoon. So... Um, um, Wishing and praying, but, uh, you know, what can you do? And uh, he's 13 years old now, so in, in uh, people years, that would be, what, about 104. So next time, we'll see some footage. Uh, likely, I'm going back and forth between whether I'm going to release the uh, Tustamina moose, uh, subsistence moose hunt, uh, which is a special program here in Alaska. Or the uh, woodcutting out in the field and get you an idea of what it's like. Right now, I'm actually going out and doing a bunch of uh, birch syrup tapping of the trees, uh, doing some forestry on the property. Is going to start ramping up very quickly, and you get an idea on how to how to do that for your own property and what's involved. Uh, next week, I'm actually likely going to go and do a, a spot on um, how to prepare if you're going to move up to Alaska. Do you really want to move up to Alaska? Have you watched too many reality TV shows that have caused you to think that it's a piece of cake and all you got to do is get up to Alaska and the whole world will open up to you? Um, in contrast to what I've learned. And actually knowing the Kilchers personally and knowing uh, Vern from uh, Bering Sea Gold, those events and those realities are just like my experiences on Treasure Coast Snake Island. So... I caution about making decisions off reality TV. That's the reason I've come out with this show, so I can give you the real experience of what it's like to live and thrive in Alaska. And right now, I'm actually looking at uh, a variety of things. I got to do an access road in here, a uh, barn uh, for for the animals. We've got some cattle coming in. Uh, pigs will be coming in again, and we'll also uh, be looking at a small in-law cabin. Uh, it'll be dry and I'll tell you about what it means to be, have a dry cabin, what that means and, and, uh, how that translates into what kind of experience you can have up here in Alaska. Cause that's often, uh, what the experience is for those who first move to Alaska is to live in a dry cabin. If you're going to live rural, you know, getting plumbing and all that kind of stuff is, is, uh, is a next level, uh, event. So thanks again. Please subscribe. Um, if you haven't picked up any of my books, I go over to Amazon, amazon.com and type in Court Graham and go to my author page. I have a variety of books. I'll actually be coming out with a book uh, about my experiences in combat in Central America. will be coming out this summer. I'll also have a, a bushcraft book on uh, for Boreal environments. So if you're wanting to understand the best ways to thrive up here in Alaska, in the woods, the various types of bushcraft knowledge to have, also, some survival techniques and skills to know uh, will also be in there, too. So thank you much again. And this is uh, Court Graham out at Five Acres of News.